Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome or welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're gonna be doing a full A to Z, a full tutorial on every single step that's involved in launching a private label Amazon FBA business. And what I wanna do in this video is I wanna take you from the position where you're at now, which is likely someone who doesn't know a lot about Amazon FBA, right through to the point where you actually have enough information and the tools to get started with your Amazon FBA journey straight away after this video. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. Okay guys, so I really want this to be the most valuable Amazon FBA tutorial out there at the moment on YouTube. So what I'm gonna be doing over this tutorial is I'm gonna be teaching you my simple five step system to launching an Amazon FBA private label product. So firstly, we're gonna look at product research. We're then gonna move on to looking at how to source and manufacture products once you've decided on the product that you're gonna launch. We'll then move on to how to ship your stock directly from your manufacturer into the Amazon fulfillment centers. We'll then look at how to create a highly converting product listing so that your product sells like crazy when you finally go to launch your product, which we'll talk about in step five towards the end of the video. Now what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna be giving you all a free product research bundle. Now, normally the tools in this bundle are only available to my academy students, but like I said, I want this to be the most valuable Amazon FBA tutorial out there on YouTube at the moment. And the best way to do that is to provide you with not only the information you need to get started, but also the tools. So the idea with these tools is that you can use them in combination with the information taught over this tutorial to actually get started on your Amazon journey straight away after this, uh, after this video. So what this tool is gonna to include is three things. Number one, a discount ticket. This is gonna give you um, discounts on all of the essential Amazon FBA softwares, including Helium 10, which we're gonna talk about a lot in this video. You're then also gonna get a product research tracker. This is gonna allow you to track all of your different product ideas at different stages of the product research funnel, which we're gonna cover in this video. And then finally, you're gonna get a profit calculation tool. This is gonna allow you to calculate your target cost per unit when you go into negotiations with manufacturers. And it's also gonna allow you to work out what your profit margin is gonna be accurately at different price points. So if you want this free bundle, all you need to do is just head over to the link down in the description and download it completely for free. Now, for most of you watching this, you're gonna know who I am. You've probably been watched a lot of my videos by now, um, but there are gonna be a lot of you watching who don't know who I am. So I just wanna quickly introduce myself. My name's Luca Davenport, and I'm an e-commerce entrepreneur and coach, and I'm the founder of the Amazon Brand Academy training and mentorship program. And again, guys, if you wanna follow me, uh, find out a little bit more about me and my story, check me out on Instagram, TikTok, and subscribe on the channel because I'm just gonna give a brief overview of myself. You guys are here for the information, so I don't wanna bore you talking about myself for ages. But just as a brief introduction, I started my e-commerce journey in 2018, and then since then, I've been able to build a six-figure brand on Amazon, a brand that does six figures annually on Amazon, which is something that I'm incredibly proud about. So if I just take you over to my Amazon store, now, I'm not trying to show you my numbers to brag or anything like that. I just want to show you my numbers quickly just to show you that, yes, I do know what I'm talking about and to also show you what's really possible with Amazon FBA private labeling. So today already, I've turned over just over 300 pounds. And over the last week, every single day, we've been doing around 1,000 pounds or just over 1,000 pounds in revenue. Now, if I take you into my dashboard, we can look at the last 30 days. Uh, here we go, and you can see that over the last 30 days, um, um, this account has turned over just over 34,000 pounds, which is incredible. And if you had asked me whether I thought I'd be doing these numbers when I first started, I wouldn't have believed you. But yeah, I just wanted to show you what's really possible with Amazon FBA. And these are just my results. Over this video, I wanna talk about a lot of my other students' results as well. Then in 2020, I decided to share the knowledge I'd gained through launching my own products and growing my own Amazon business so that I could help and support others on their journey. So I started my YouTube channel, um, in 2020 and then a few months later I also launched the Amazon Brand Academy training and mentorship program and since then I've become one of the UK's leading authorities in the Amazon selling and advertising space and I've helped hundreds of students launch Amazon FBA businesses through my Amazon Brand Academy and here's just a snapshot of some of the incredible results our students have achieved and here's a quick snapshot of some of our students with their 100k and 10k awards these are the awards that I send out to students uh, to 
to acknowledge their achievements with their own private label brands on Amazon. So through growing my Amazon FBA business to the point at where it's at today and through helping hundreds of students also launch their own Amazon FBA businesses, I've really learned what works and what doesn't work on Amazon. And I've been able to distill the art of selling on Amazon into a science. And what I wanna do today is I wanna share that knowledge with you. Okay, so let's talk about the opportunity and I'm gonna give you a brief introduction into what private labeling is and what Amazon FBA is. Now guys, if you already know about this stuff and you wanna skip forward to any part of this tutorial, then check out the timestamps in the description. That's gonna help you navigate this training tutorial. Also, if you come back to the video at any point, you can use uh, those timestamps to find the information that you're looking for. If you are planning on starting an e-commerce business, there's really two different business models that you can choose between. The first is selling other people's products, and this is known as reselling. If you decide to be a reseller, what will happen is a brand will get their own products made by a factory or manufacturer, and then you as a reseller will buy those products from the brand and then sell them to the end consumer, either on your own website or on Amazon. The second choice you have is to sell your own products and this is called direct to consumer. So if you decide to go for this model, you are the brand owner, you get your own products made by a factory or manufacturer and then you sell those products directly to the consumer, again, either on your own website or uh, on a platform like Amazon. So if you're thinking of launching an e-commerce business, which one out of these two models would I recommend? Well. 10 times out of 10, 100% of the time, I'd always recommend going for option two, which is to sell your own branded products direct to consumer. And there's really three key advantages or three main reasons why I'd always recommend going for this business model over being a reseller. The first key advantage is that selling your own branded products means you have more control. You have control over the purchase price, sale price, and supply. So for example, let's say that instead you actually decide to resell other branded products. You don't have any control over the purchase price, the sale price, or the supply of that product. The brand owner controls all of that. They'll tell you what price you can buy the product from them for. They'll tell you what price they want you to sell the product for. This is called MRRP, Manufacturer Recommended Retail Price. And they'll also have control over the supply. If they decide they don't like the way you're selling their product or they just don't want to sell to you anymore, they can cut the supply off in a second, which can completely destroy your business. On the flip side, if you are selling your own branded products, you have control over the purchase price, the sale price, and the supply. The second advantage is that there's also less competition. If you're reselling other brands' products, anyone can sell those products. And as a result, there are hundreds, thousands of other sellers selling that exact same product. And what this means is, is that it's just a drive down to the bottom in terms of pricing. Think about the way that you shop online. When you go to shop for a pair of Nike trainers, you search for the product online, you find the cheapest price, and then you purchase that product. And that always happens when you're reselling products, which is not what you want as a business owner. If you're selling your own branded products, you're the only person who can sell that product. Okay, so there's far less competition. The third advantage is that there's no middleman. You don't have to give the reseller a cut because you're selling direct to consumer. And really, all three of these advantages lead to one outcome, higher profit margins and a higher success rate. And that's why I'd always recommend launching your own brand, selling to direct to consumer over being a reseller. Now, I know what you're probably thinking, you're thinking, Luca, okay, that all sounds good, but I, don't, I haven't invented a product. I don't have an innovative product idea that no one else is selling. But here's the truth. You don't need to reinvent the wheel. All you need to do is something called private labeling. And private labeling is taking a product that already exists in the market, taking a product where there are factories that already manufacture that product, contacting those factories and getting them to manufacture that product with your own logo and branding on it. And this is what we call private labeling. And guys, it really is as simple as that. You don't need to invent a new product. You don't need to innovate a new product. This is all you need to do to create your own branded products and sell direct to consumer. And through private labeling, it allows you to differentiate through branding. That's what allows you to differentiate from, differentiate from your competitors. And it allows you to stand out from them, increase your product's perceived value compared to unbranded products, and also build brand loyalty. 
It's just one of those things that as humans, for some reason, we perceive products that are branded as having a higher value than unbranded products. And I wanna show you a very simple, quick example of this. So out of these two products, which one would you pay more for? The product on the left or the product on the right of your screen? Now, for most of you watching, you're probably gonna say, of course, we'd pay more for the product on the right-hand side, that's a Chili's water bottle. And you would be correct. The product on the left sells on Amazon for 11 pounds and the product on the right sells on Amazon for 27 pounds. But here's the thing, this product on the right is exactly the same product as the product on the left. Chili's did not invent this style of water bottle. These two water bottles are almost identical. They may even be sold in the same factory, but just through having that iconic Chili's logo on it, just through private labeling, Chili's are able to charge almost three times more than the product on the left. And here's the thing, Chili's actually sell more units than the product on the left, even being almost three times more expensive. And that is the power of private labeling. Now look, I'm not gonna lie to you, private labeling is an incredible business model, but if you do decide to launch a private label brand, you are gonna be faced with some big issues. And these include things like, how do you know what product to sell? So how do you know what products have good demand and are gonna sell well? How do you know how many units to order once you've chosen a product? You don't want to go out of stock straight away, but you also don't wanna be left with loads of excess inventory and loads of money held in stock. Another issue is how to reach potential customers. You know, you may not know a lot about digital marketing. And then finally, how are you gonna deal with the order fulfillment returns and customer service? If your product sells really well, this stuff is gonna take a huge amount of time. But what if I told you that there was a way that you could know exactly what products to sell, know exactly how many units to order for that product, reach millions of warm customers ready to buy every single day, and never have to deal with order fulfillment, customer returns, or customer service. I'm mean, you're probably thinking, yeah, okay, cool, I'd wanna know what that is. And the answer to that is with Amazon FBA. Amazon FBA is really the solution to all of those issues that you're gonna be faced with when launching a private label brand. And private labeling with Amazon FBA is a force to be reckoned with. That is where the gold is. That is the perfect business opportunity. And I wanna to explain to you why. So why Amazon? Well, firstly, Amazon has a huge amount of data and we can actually harness that data using tools like Helium 10 and we can use that data to inform us on what decisions, uh, what products to launch. We can use that data to find products that have good demand, relatively low competition and that are gonna be winning products. I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that in the product research part of this video. The second reason is that Amazon already has the traffic. Selling on Amazon means that you don't have to be a social media marketing genius. You just need to list your product on Amazon and the traffic is already there. Amazon.co.uk, so the UK version of Amazon, gets 350 million visits. Yes, million visits every single month. And the cool thing is that traffic is warm traffic. People come onto Amazon, not just to browse, they go onto Amazon to purchase products specifically. So those people are warm customers ready to buy. And just to show you what the power of having all of that warm traffic, Amazon sold 21 billion pounds in revenue on their platform last year alone, and just over 50%, so 11.4 billion of that 21 billion was actually sold by third party sellers, just like me and my students, and just like you if you decide to get started with this business model. The next reason is growth. So as I showed you in this graph, Amazon's growing year on year. And as they say, a rising tide raises all boats. So just by being on Amazon, your business is gonna grow as Amazon grows and as more people shop on that platform. And finally, the reason why Amazon is the place where you wanna be selling is their FBA service. And FBA stands for Fulfillment by Amazon. Essentially, the way the FBA works is that as a private label brand owner, you send your inventory in to the Amazon fulfillment centers. You can either send this from your house or directly from your manufacturer, which we'll talk about later on in the video. Amazon will then receive and store your products in their fulfillment centers across the UK. Then when a customer orders your product on Amazon, Amazon will actually pick, pack, and ship your units directly to your customers. They'll also deal with all of the customer service and any customer returns. And as a result, 
you never have to touch any stock and you don't have to deal with any customer service or returns. And what this means is you have a business by selling on Amazon, you have a business where you have massive time freedom and location freedom. Because Amazon is doing all the heavy lifting and all of the work for you, they've basically automated your whole business. This means that you have a huge amount of time freedom. You need to spend very little time each week managing your business. Also, because you never have to touch any stock, you can really be located anywhere in the world. If you sell in the UK, you don't have to live here. If you sell in the US, you don't have to live there. You can really run your business from anywhere using Amazon's FBA service. All you need to do is manage your PPC advertising, which again, we'll talk about later on in this video, and reorder stock when you're running low. That is really it, and that can be done in a few hours per week from anywhere in the world while bringing you in a full-time income. That's exactly what it's done for me. It's exactly what it's done for many of my Amazon Brand Academy students. And it's exactly what it can do for you if you decide to get started. And that is the power of private labeling combined with Amazon FBA. Together, these two form a really powerful business model, and in my opinion, the best business model to start if you're looking to start an online business today. However, there is one important truth that you really need to know about before getting started, and that is, Amazon FBA is not a get rich quick scheme. I see so many people talking about online how you're gonna be driving a Lamborghini and throwing money in there overnight. And the truth is that is just not the case. I've been selling for many years. I'm not driving a Lamborghini. I'm not a millionaire, neither are my students you're not going to be a millionaire overnight with Amazon FBA. You're not gonna be a millionaire overnight with any business model. So if that's what you're looking for, then stop watching this video right now because that is just not what you're gonna get with Amazon FBA. It's not what you're gonna get with any online business model. And anyone who tells you different is just lying to you. That said, with high quality information and training, the right mentorship and support from someone who's already been there before you, hard work and dedication, and most importantly, time. Have some patience, put in the time. You can build a highly profitable, sustainable business that is very passive once you've put in the upfront work and that you can run from anywhere around the world, okay? So you can achieve this, but to get there, you need to actually get started and you need to do these things over here. You need to put in the hard work and time. And really the most important thing is that you just get started. As Mark Twain said, the secret to getting ahead is getting started. So hopefully this video is gonna give you the information, tools and inspiration to actually get started so you can get started straight away after this video. Okay guys, so let's actually get into this five step system and let's kick things off by looking at how to do product research properly. So what is product research? Well, product research is essentially the process of discovering and developing winning product ideas. It's as simple as that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to discover and develop winning product ideas using something that I like to call the product research funnel. This is a three-stage funnel where you start at the top of the funnel with lots of different product ideas. You just wanna start off by filling it with as many ideas as possible. And then using a set of criteria, you're gonna filter through those products, whittle them down to your until you're left with just a few winning products. And that is what the product research funnel does. So let's kick things off by talking about stage number one in the product research funnel, which is called the product idea factory. And guys, this is the exact same strategy that I use in my Amazon FBA training program, the Amazon Brand Academy. So if you're in interested in checking that out, make sure you check out the link down in the description. Now in this stage, all you're trying to do is fill your funnel with as many product ideas as possible that meet four key criteria. The first criteria that you wanna be looking for is products that are small and light. Now, the reason why you wanna be looking for small and light products is the smaller and lighter your product, the cheaper it is gonna to be to ship that product from your manufacturer to the Amazon Fulfillment Center, and the cheaper it's gonna to be to ship that product from Amazon's fulfillment centers to your customers. This is what they call a fulfillment fee. So ideally, you're looking for a small and lightweight product to help reduce those costs. The next criteria you wanna be looking for is that the product is simple and durable. And the reason for that is the more, the more complicated a product is, or the more fragile a product is, the more likely that product is to break, and the more likely the product is to break, 
the higher your chances of getting negative customer reviews and negative reviews are going to destroy your product's performance. So stick to simple and durable products that are not very likely to break. The third criteria you wanna be looking for is products that sell between 10 and 50 pounds. Anything below 10 pounds and your profit margins get really tight and the margin of error gets really tight. And as a new seller, you want to have bigger profit margins, you wanna have more room for error. So try not to sell any products for under a tenner. Um, and if you can avoid it, avoid selling products over 50 pounds. Um, products that sell for more than 50 pounds leads to higher risk. If any of your units get damaged during transit, if any of your products get damaged by customers when they're sending them in for returns, um, that is a higher loss for you. So try and sell products between that 10 and 50 pounds range. That's the sweet spot. The fourth and final criteria that you wanna be looking for is products that are brandable. Some products just don't work well with branding. There's not really a way to brand them. Um, so ideally you wanna find products that are brandable. So those are the four criteria you wanna be looking for. And the best way that you can go about finding these products, oh, well, there's lots of different ways and I cover many, many different ways in my full training program. And obviously there's not time to go through all of those, but two of the best ways you can use to discover these product ideas is firstly the Helium 10 black box tool, which I'll show you how to use in just a sec. And then also something called Amazon store sniping, which is a really nice little hack, a little cheeky method that you can use to try and find product ideas. So firstly, let's look at the Helium 10 black box tool. So I absolutely love this tool and you'll see that I talk about Helium 10 and I use it a lot through this whole uh, video. Um, and if you want to get your hands on the Helium 10 subscription with a massive discount, then you can use the code LUCADAV10 to get 10% off for life or LUCADAV20 to get 20% off for six months. Um, you can also find discount links in the description of this video. Now, the way that this tool works is essentially it has access to all of the products sold on Amazon, the whole catalog of products sold on Amazon. And then what you can do is you can use this filter section to say, okay, I only want to find products that meet this certain criteria. The tool will then filter through all of the products on Amazon and it will only show you products that match the criteria that you're looking for. So we can use those first four criteria that I just mentioned to actually find products that match that criteria. So the first thing you always wanna do with all of these Helium 10 tools is make sure uh, that you've selected the correct marketplace. So if you're selling in the US, amazon.com is the one you wanna select. If you're selling in the UK, like I am for example, you wanna select amazon.co.uk. You then want to come over to price and we're gonna do a minimum price of 10 pounds, maximum price of 50 pounds, because remember that's what we're looking for. Um, you then, want to also enter in a uh, shipping size. So under here, we want to select everything, everything apart from anything oversized. So this is only gonna include products that are fairly small and light, not oversized, perfect. Then you wanna move on to um, monthly revenue. Now this is gonna be budget dependent and this is something that's really important to understand. There is a tool inside the Amazon Brand Academy called the Budget Calc Tool, which is gonna help you work out exactly what monthly revenue you can look for with the budget that you have. Um, but if you don't have access to that tool, then a really kind of rough guideline is that you should be looking for products anywhere between one and two times uh, your budget in terms of monthly revenue. So for example, if you have a starting budget of 5,000 pounds to launch your first private label product, you're able to look for products that generate anywhere between five and 10,000 pounds per month on Amazon. So that's what you would enter here. So just for example, we'll do 5,000 to 10,000 pounds per month. And then you just wanna leave it at that and you wanna come down and select search. And what you're gonna get is loads of different results that meet the criteria that you're looking for. And what you wanna do is go through all of these results manually and ask yourself, do these meet the other criteria that I'm looking for? Are these small and lightweight? Are they simple and durable? And are they easily brandable? So for example, this top, this, uh, top result here, bed sheets. Bed sheets is a good example of a product that I would say is not super easily brandable. So I would probably avoid a product like that. But if we scroll down and we can see that one of these, uh, okay, this is potty training pants. 
That is a small and lightweight product. It's simple and fairly durable and is easily brandable. So that would be a, uh, a product that meets all the criteria and that you could then take and move on to stage two of the product research funnel. So what you wanna do when you find products that meet your criteria is to take what you think is kind of the main keyword for that product. So this is the, the keyword that best describes the product. So uh, for this example, I would say it's potty training pants. It tends to be the keyword phrase right at the beginning of the title. And then what you wanna do is then take that over and add that to your product research x tracker so guys this is the free tool that you can download with the product research bundle as i said this is normally only for academy members but i'm offering it to you guys completely for free just for watching this video and you can see it's got three tabs product idea factory assessing demand and competition and the 999 cart tracker so what you want to do is start off with this product idea factory tab you just want to enter in the product name, this is the main keyword for the product, and then the product niche. So I would say this is in the children's niche. And this is just gonna allow you to keep track of all of your product ideas as you work your way through stage one and all the different methods. The second method that you should be using to fill your funnel with product ideas is called store sniping. And I really love this method. So with this method, what you need to do is take the product names that you found in the Helium 10 black box tool, search them on Amazon, and then come down and find the top bestsellers, the top organically uh, ranked listings. So you wanna avoid these sponsored products. These are PPC ads. And then you wanna find the top few organically ranked products. And then you wanna click into one of those products. And then you wanna click into the seller's store. So if you come down to the right hand side here, you'll see that it says sold by and you can click into their store. And then you wanna see all the other products that this seller sells. Now the idea here is that if this seller is one of the top best sellers for laptop stands or a product, then they probably know what they're doing so they probably have lots of other products that are good product ideas, other products that you could consider launching. So come into their store, look at the other products they sell, and then you can take these other products. So for instance, this is a solar fountain or a mouse mat, and then you can take those product ideas and then you can add them to your product research tracker sheet to take to stage two, which is assessing demand and competition. In this stage of the product research funnel, what you want to be doing is taking all of those product ideas that you found in stage one and assessing the overall opportunity with those products using three main criteria. The first criteria is that the product has strong and stable or ideally growing demand. And this is so, so, so important. This should be the foundation that you're looking for for any product that you consider launching. And here's why. If the product does not have good demand, it doesn't matter how amazing your product is. Your product could be a hundred times better than any of the competitors out there. You could create a perfect product listing. You could smash your PPC advertising, but if there's no demand there in the first place, your product is not going to sell well. So you need to have good demand as a starting point. The second criteria that you need to be looking for is that the product, the niche has relatively weak competition. And the third and final criteria is that there's room for offer improvement. If you know that there's strong demand for a product, you know that if you can beat the competition, your product's gonna sell well. If you also know that the competition is fairly weak and that there's clear room for improvement, you also know that you're gonna be able to create an improved product offer and outcompete your competitors. And as a result, your product's gonna do well and you're gonna be happy and doing well as a seller. So that is why it's really important that all, any product you consider launching meets these three criteria. So let's talk about assessing demand. Now the best way to assess demand is to use another Helium 10 tool, which is called the X-Ray tool, which is part of their Chrome extension. And when you use this tool, there's two things you wanna be looking for. The first thing is that the revenue is within your target range. Remember guys, this is budget-based. You should be looking for revenue that's somewhere between one and two times your starting budget. And you also wanna make sure that there's an even spread of revenue across the top 10 positions. I'll show you how to do this, and I'm gonna show you why you need to be looking for these two things. So what you wanna do is head over to Amazon, take your main keyword that you found during stage one and search it in the Amazon search bar, let the search results load, and then you want to open the Helium 10 X-Ray tool on their Chrome extension. 
And remember earlier in the video, I said that the key, the reason why you want to sell on Amazon is because Amazon has lots of data. This is what the data looks like. So tools like Helium 10 can use that data to, to allow you to find products in the black box tool. And it can also use that data to allow you to assess the opportunity for each of those product ideas using tools like the X-Ray tool. And then what this tool is doing is showing you all of the products that show up in the search results and then lots of data for each of those products. So what you firstly want to do is look at this revenue column here. And what this tool uh, is going to do is it's going to show you the estimated revenue um, for each one of these products. Now, these numbers aren't 100% accurate, but they tend to be somewhere between kind of 80 and 90% accurate. So that is a pretty good go um, at giving you a pretty accurate number, a pretty accurate view of what the revenue is for each of these products. So looking at this, we can see that there is clearly good, strong demand for these laptop stands. All of them have a pretty high demand. And what we can also see is that there's a pretty even spread of that demand across the top 10 listings. Now, the reason why you want to look for a good spread of demand is that if, for instance, just one of sellers or two of the sellers are generating a huge amount of revenue and the other sellers aren't really turning over that much, what that seems to suggest is that either those sellers are big brands or they're very established and they're going to be very hard to compete with. So if you see that only one or two of the sellers are completely dominating, that's a niche, a product that you want to avoid. If you see something that looks like this, where the revenue is really evenly distributed, that shows you that you don't need to be the best seller in the market. You just need to be able to compete and with some of the sellers and get yourself into the top 10 listings and you should be able to generate a healthy revenue just like the other sellers. Now, I just want to look at these numbers a little bit deeper because these numbers are pretty crazy, right? Each one of these sellers is making somewhere between 20 and 100,000 pounds per month just from one laptop stand, just from one product. So if we look at these numbers in a bit more detail, let's say the average revenue for these sellers is around 50,000 pounds a month. Now let's say that their profit margin is around 30%, which is pretty reasonable for Amazon FBA private label products. Most private label sellers see a profit margin of somewhere between 20 and 30% after advertising costs. That means that these sellers on average are making around 15,000 pounds profit per month. Okay, that's not revenue, profit per month and around £180,000 profit per year just from one product. And most of these sellers sell multiple products. So this is just an example of really how powerful private labeling and Amazon FBA are combined together and what you really can achieve uh, with this model. But it's really important to note, like I said earlier, to be able to launch a product that sells £50,000 a month, you would need somewhere between £25,000 and £50,000 as a starting budget. If you've got less, then you're not going to be able to consider products that sell for this high amount. But that's totally fine. There are hundreds and thousands of products out there that you can launch with a lower starting budget, starting from around the £2,000 mark. Now, the Helium 10 X-Ray tool is a great tool to be able to show you what demand is like at the moment. It's a snapshot in time looking at the last month. But what it can't tell you is what demand has looked like for that product over the last 12 months and hence what it's likely to look like over the next 12 months. And again, you need to make sure that that demand is stable over the year. You want to make sure that it's not seasonal. And you also want to make sure that it's stable over the years or ideally is actually growing because if the demand is growing, then your revenue is also going to grow over time. And to be able to assess this, you can use Google Trends. It's super easy to do and I'll show you how to do it now. Okay, so what you want to do is come over to Google Trends and then just search your main keywords. So we just want to put in laptops laptop stand here before you search just make sure you selected the correct marketplace in my case this is UK so that's all good and I can click search then what you want to do is you want to look at a five-year period now what this tool is doing is it's showing you the search volume for this specific keyword on Google over the last 12 months or if you click down here you can look at the search volume over the past five years Search volume for a keyword is a pretty direct indicator of demand for a product. Um, the more demand there is, the more people are looking for it online, and that's what you can use this tool for. 
Now, what you can see is that the, the demand is pretty even over the year. So if we look at, over, at the last 12 months, you can see that the demand is pretty even over the whole year. What this means is this is not a seasonal product. So a seasonal product is any product that the sales are really high at one point in the year and low at other points in the year. A good example of a seasonal product would be a swimming pool. So if we look at swimming pool, you'll see that demand peaks over the summer months and then is much lower in the winter months. And if you look over the past few year, five years, you'll see this kind of peak and trough um, chart. So you can see it peaks in summer, dips in winter, peaks in summer, dips in winter. If the demand for your product is seasonal like this, it's a product that you want to avoid. Seasonal products mean that you're not gonna have a stable amount of revenue and a stable income over the year, and it's really hard to manage stock for seasonal products. So ideally, you wanna avoid these kind of products. If we go back to the laptop stand product, you can see that it is not a seasonal product and that actually over time demand is growing. Over the last five years, demand has grown and looks like it's continuing uh, to grow. So this is ideally what you're looking for, a non-seasonal product with growing demand. Once you've assessed the demand for a product, what you can then do is move to looking at the level of competition for that product. Now, before we look at that, one thing you need to really understand is the way that customers shop on Amazon. So when customers shop on Amazon, what they do is they search for a keyword, they then compare the desirability of each product in the search results in a very quick succession, and then they make a decision of which one has the highest overall desirability, and that's the one that they purchase. And when customers are assessing the overall desirability of a product, they look at the product itself, what the product is bundled with, so what accessories or freebies it comes with. They look at the product listing, how good the images and bullet points are, the price, the number of reviews, and the review rating, so the quality of the product. When customers decide on a product, they do not just look at number of reviews. And what this means is, when you're assessing the competition or the strength of the competition, you can't just look at this one metric. I know there's loads of people on YouTube that will tell you, you just have to look at how many reviews the competitors have. That is not true. Anyone telling you that is wrong. They don't know what they're talking about it. When you assess the strength of competition for a product niche, you need to assess all of these things because these are all the things that customers look at when they're making a purchasing decision. So let's firstly look at how to assess the strength of the competitor's products, bundles, and product listings. To be able to do this, you really just need to use your own mind power. There's not really any tools that you can use to do this. You firstly want to look at the products and the bundles that those products come with. So ideally what you're looking for when you're looking for weak competition is a market where all the products out there are really similar. There's not much variation in them. All the products are quite similar and they have very few bundles. And overall, there's just a poor product offering in the space. On the flip side, if you look at a product niche, you search the keyword on Amazon, you look at the search results and you see that there's loads of different variations in products covering all bases. They all have really well-developed bundles and a strong product offering. It's gonna be very hard for you to compete with those products. On the flip side, if they're all very similar with very few of them having bundles or poor bundles, you know that you can come to market with a differentiated product with a really solid bundle and you're gonna be able to compete. So that's ideally what you're looking for. You also wanna look at your competitors' product listings. Click into them, look at the images, look at the listing copy. And ideally you wanna you want to see Lots of your competitors have quite bad product images, badly written listing copies, because you know with the information that you learn in this tutorial, you're gonna be able to create amazing Amazon FBA product images. You're gonna be able to create perfect listing copy, and you're gonna be able to outcompete your competitors just by having a better listing. On the flip side, if all of your competitors have amazing high quality images, really well done listings, it's gonna be a lot harder to compete with them. Next, what you then wanna do is assess the number of reviews and the review rating because these are still important metrics to look at. And the best way to assess these is again to use the Helium 10 Chrome extension X-ray tool. And what you're looking for is really two things. Firstly, with the number of reviews, you ideally want to find products that have a low average number of reviews across your competitors and where at least two out of the top 10 listings that show up in the search results for your main keyword um, have under 100 reviews. What this is gonna show you is that 
the competitors are not that well established. The more reviews they have, the longer they've been selling, the more established they are, and the harder they're gonna to be to compete with. And if two or more of, the, uh, of your competitors with, have managed to generate a healthy revenue and gain organic keyword ranking to the top t one, one of the top 10 positions with un under 100 reviews, what this shows is, is that you should be able to do the same with a new product that has a low number of reviews. Reviews numbers are not the most important thing um, in this product niche. What you also wanna be looking for is that your competitors have a low average review rating. What this will show you or what this indicates is that generally your competitors have fairly low quality products that customers are not very happy with, which means you can come to market with a much higher quality product, a much better product and dominate your competition by getting consistent five star reviews and just having a better product offering than them. So what you wanna do is go back to Amazon, search your main keyword again and click on the Helium 10 X-ray tool. And then you wanna firstly look at this review count column here. This is gonna show you the number of reviews each of these products has. As you can see in this example with laptop stands, all of the sellers have a very high number of reviews in the high hundreds, some in the high thousands. Um, so this is the perfect example of a very competitive product with probably too many um, too many reviews. So uh, you probably want to avoid this product. You next, you next want to look at the review rating column. Again, the vast majority of these sellers have a very high average review rating of somewhere between 4.5 and 5. So looking at these two columns, we can say that actually the competition is pretty strong with this product and it's probably a little bit too strong to enter the market with. Once you've assessed the demand and competition, what you then want to do is any products that actually meet all the criteria you're looking for, you want to take them from stage one to stage two of your product research tracker tool. Um, and you then just want to enter it in into this um, stage two section. So give the quality score for the product something between one and five, enter the product name in the main keyword, then choose the product category enter the product niche, monthly revenue, revenue distribution, whether it's good, uh, evenly distributed or unevenly distributed. And then you can give the competition a strength between low, medium or high, and then add any additional notes you want in here. Again, guys, you can download this tool completely free in the product research bundle. The link is down in the description. It's gonna help you keep track of all of your products as you work your way through the product research funnel. Now, any products that meet the criteria that you're looking for in stage two when you assess the demand and competition, you can then move on to stage three with, which is all about improving on the competition. And in this stage, what you're gonna be doing is deciding what offer improvements to make to help outcompete your competitors. And there's really two main methods you can use. Well, look, there are loads of different methods. And again, I cover all of these in my full training program, but there's two main methods that I wanna talk about in this tutorial. The first is using the recently bought together um, section on Amazon and analyzing that. And then the second method is a really cool method which you can use called review hunting. So let me show you how to use both of these methods. Okay, so firstly, let's talk about review hunting. So when you're review hunting, what you wanna do is you wanna look through your competitors and the search results, and you wanna find a product that has a high number of reviews with a relatively low review rating. Now, guys, if you're, you've taken a product to stage three, the likelihood is that most of the competitors have a fairly low review rating, so this should be quite easy. Um, I found an example here, so this product has 200 reviews, Ideally, you would have more than that, but that's not too bad, and an average review rating of 4.2. Now, what you can do is you can use another Helium 10 tool, so this time we're gonna come up to the Helium 10 Chrome extension, and instead of using the X-Ray tool that we've been using, you wanna come down to Review Insights. Then, when you click on this tool, you'll be taken to an overview that looks like this, and what you wanna come down to is just the one star reviews and click see all. This is gonna only show you the one star reviews. So if we click into that, you'll then only be shown the one star reviews for this product. And then what you can do 
is you can look through these one-star reviews and find out what customers are complaining about. So for example, here customers are saying made from plastic or synthetic material, terrible quality, it, broken, it broke straight out of the packaging. The plastic structure means that it is not going to last long. So what you can start to see is that customers are all complaining about the same thing. They're all complaining about how their laptop stand is made from a cheap plastic material and as a result, the laptop stand is breaking. Now what you wanna do is do the same process for lots of your competitors and if you find that customers are complaining about the same thing again and again, you know that you can come to market with a product that is of higher quality. I would use this information and I would decide to make my laptop stand out of metal and make it a highly durable product. That way, um, it's, going to, um, it's going to consistently get good reviews and it's gonna be better than what's out there at the moment that is getting these negative reviews. So review hunting is great. It's a great method to work out what product improvements to make. Next, you wanna think about what type of products you can actually bundle with your main product to create an improved pro overall product offer. And a great way to do this is um, the frequently bought together analysis. So what you can do is come back onto the product listing and then just scroll down below the images. You'll see that there's a little box here that says frequently bought together. This is Amazon telling you what customers bought at the same time in a single basket. And what this means is, is that if customers are buying these products together, they tend to be used together and they may make a good bundle. So what you wanna do is look at five to 10 of your main competitors and look at this frequently bought together bundle uh, section. And what you can see here is that this laptop stand is very commonly sold with a mouse pad and a keyboard and mouse. And that makes sense, right? People are using this product to hold their laptop. They wanna use a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse. So looking at this, you may decide that you want to launch a bundle of a laptop stand plus a keyboard and mouse. That may be a good bundle. And this is a great way to find bundling opportunities. And guys, by using these two methods, you can create a highly desirable product offer that's absolutely gonna dominate your competition when you launch. And this is exactly the same method that Narendra, one of my students, used to launch his product. He looked at, he did review hunting to find out what customers were complaining about and then use that to improve his product. And then he used a frequently bought together box to decide on an awesome bundle, which when he launched absolutely dominated his competition. So I just wanna share Narendra's story for you very quickly. So I actually managed to dig out Narendra's uh, first post in our Facebook group. And he said, hi all, still getting used to the world of Facebook, but very happy to be part of this journey with everyone. Looking forward to hearing some great stories. The course is really thorough and comprehensive. Thanks, Luca. So it's pretty awesome to be able to find his first story at the beginning of his journey back in 2020. Then after a few months of working together one-on-one, -on -one, helping Narendra develop his product idea, he actually launched his product later on that year. And I managed to find his post in the Facebook group. And he says, the units have literally been flying off the shelves last 30 days, 13K and counting. And this is a screenshot of his first, I think 20 days selling on Amazon. He had already turned over 14,000 pounds in revenue with his first product because he used the exact techniques that I've taught you so far in this video and that I'm gonna teach you in the rest of this video. And this is Narendra with his 10K awards. Uh, this is an award that we send out to all students when they break the 10K mark with their brand on Amazon. Narendra then went on, on to turn over generate over a hundred thousand pounds in his first month selling on Amazon, which is incredible just with this one product. And then here's an awesome picture of Narendra with his 100K award, obviously looking very happy with himself, which he should be because those are incredible results. And I'm just showing this to show you that it's not just me seeing these results. My students are also seeing this, these results. And it's not even just my students seeing these results. Honestly, guys, anyone can do it. And just as Narendra said, and this is really the thing I love most about his post in the Facebook group, he says, yes, it is possible. And if I can do it, so can you. And that's so true, guys. Really, anyone can do it. And I just want to show you that anyone can do it by talking about some of the numbers. So 
There's 2.4 million active Amazon sellers globally, and 50% of Amazon sellers generate over £4,000 per month in revenue, and 25% of sellers generate over £20,000 per month in revenue. So it's not just the top 1% doing well, a very large proportion of Amazon sellers are doing really good numbers. Now, I've not just plucked these numbers out of thin air, this is from an official study done by Jungle Scout where they surveyed just under 5,000 Amazon sellers from all over the world. So this is very reliable data and you can just see that Amazon FBA is changing a lot of people's lives. 25% of 2.4 million is um is just over is just over half a million so there's over half a million amazon sellers generating over twenty thousand pounds a month so this just shows how many lives amazon fba and private labeling is changing so guys yes anyone can see success with amazon fba but to actually see success, you need to get started. Again, as Mark Twain said, the secret to getting ahead is getting started. So hopefully at the end of this video, you're actually gonna take action and get started on your journey. Okay, so now that we've talked about how to find and develop a winning product idea, let's talk about how to actually source and manufacture that product once you've come up with the idea. And this is step two of our five-step system. So how do you actually go about finding a supplier? Well. You can just look on Google, but really the best place to find a supplier is on a website called Alibaba. There's other websites out there, but Alibaba is just by far the best place to look for manufacturers. And what Alibaba is, is it's a platform that connects buyers with manufacturers, um, which is exactly perfect for our needs. So why don't we head over to Alibaba and I'll show you exactly how to use it. It's super simple. So let's say for example that we're planning on launching a laptop stand. All you wanna do is come over to alibaba.com and just type in laptop stand and search. And then what you're gonna get is all of the different manufacturers around the world who manufacture laptop stands. But what you wanna do is you wanna to start to kind of filter these result, results down a bit because there's gonna be a lot of good manufacturers and a lot of bad ones. And you wanna be able to find the good ones as quickly as possible. So if you come over to the left-hand side here, you'll see supplier features. And this is where you wanna start uh, whittling down the results. So firstly, you wanna select trade assurance. What this means is we only want to look at manufacturers that have trade assurance Trade assurance means that they subscribe to a service that Alibaba offers, which provides protection for buyers in case there's any issues uh, with the manufacturing process. Next, I would always select verified suppliers. Verified suppliers are suppliers where Alibaba have actually, Ali, Alibaba or a third party company have actually gone over to the factory, verified that the factory is who they say that they are and that they're meeting certain standards. So just by selecting these two options, you're going to be left with only highly reputable manufacturers. So that you can start to go through this list. And what I would look for in a manufacturer is firstly, the number of years they've been trading and the number of diamonds that they've got. And diamonds is the uh, quantity of goods that they supply. So ideally look for suppliers that have been around for at least two years plus, the longer the better, and do a fairly good volume. The longer they've been around, the more volume they do, so the more diamonds they have, the more uh, reliable that manufacturer is gonna be. So once you find a few, you wanna open them up in another tab. I would recommend selecting between 10 and 20 different manufacturers that make the design of the product that you're looking for. And then you just wanna click contact supplier and you wanna fire off a first contact email to 10 to 20 suppliers, asking them about what uh, type of products they manufacture, any questions you have about the products, pricing and so on. What will then happen is you'll start to get replies from all the different manufacturers on Alibaba. And what I would do is I would use another Excel spreadsheet similar to the product research tracker that I'm showing you just to keep track of all the different manufacturers. Once you have contact back from them, you can start to move into negotiations on price with the ones that can meet all of your specs. But it's really important that you need to calculate your target cost per unit or CPU before going into negotiations. You need to know what price you need to get that product at for it to be profitable for you before you go into negotiations. And to do that, you can use the profit profit calculation tool that I offer in the free product research bundle. Again, guys, the link is in the description. Now, some really important things to remember 
it's really important to understand all of Amazon's selling fees before you use this profit calculation tool. That's super important. Also, if you're selling in the UK, you need to include import VAT and import duties. Make sure you do not forget those. And then finally, you should be aiming for a 40% profit margin before any advertising or PPC spend. By using the profit calculation tool, you can actually enter in all of the Amazon selling fees, you can enter in a sales price, and then you can play around with different, uh, you can play around with different um, sale prices here and different unit costs, and then you'll be able to have a look at your profit margin down in this section here. What you wanna do is once you've entered in information in all of these sections, is just play around with different unit costs to work out which unit cost is gonna give you a 40% profit margin. Once you've found the unit cost that is gonna give you a 40% profit margin at the average or expected sale price, which you enter in this column here, in this section here, you then have your target cost per unit and you can use that going into negotiations with your manufacturers. Once you've negotiated with your manufacturers and you've found a few manufacturers that can meet all your specs, can supply the product at the correct cost per unit, what you then wanna do is get some product samples sent. So I would always recommend getting samples sent from anywhere between three and five different manufacturers so that you can then decide on which supplier you wanna move forward with based on the quality of those samples. Once you make a decision on your supplier, you can then go ahead and pay them a deposit to start the manufacturing process. This tends to be a 30% deposit. You then pay the remaining 70% before the, the units actually get shipped and leave the factory. Once you've paid the deposit, the goods can start to be manufactured and then you can move on to step three, which is getting your products shipped. So once the goods are all manufactured, you can then get the products shipped. Now, regardless of where you get your products manufactured, whether it's in the UK, in China, in India, you have two options. You can either ship the products to your home address or to a warehouse and then into the Amazon fulfillment centers, or you can ship the units directly from your manufacturer to the Amazon fulfillment centers. And I would always go with the latter. By going with the second option, you save on shipping costs because we only have to ship once. And as a result, your profit margin is gonna be higher. However, if you do that, it's really important to have a third party inspection. Get a private company to go to your manufacturer and do an inspection of the goods before you pay the remaining 70% um, to your manufacturer. You need to make sure that those products are well made and meet your specs and are not gonna have any issues being sent directly into Amazon. What you need to do is assess the manufacturing quality and that the shipment has been packaged properly. So when you send goods directly into Amazon, you they need the boxes need to meet certain spec, there needs to be certain labeling on the boxes, and you wanna make sure everything is labeled properly and it's gonna be a smooth transition uh, getting those units into Amazon. So what you can do is hire a third party inspection company to do this for you. So let's talk about the, uh, the process here. So the first thing you wanna do is hire an inspection company. Um, if you're based in China, you wanna find one based in China. If you're manufacturing in India, you wanna find an inspection company based in India. In China, this normally costs somewhere between 100 and 200 pounds, so it's really not too expensive. What the inspection company will then do is inspect 10 to 20% of the shipment. They'll check the quality of the goods, they'll run lots of tests, and then they will provide an inspection report. These tend to be very detailed 20, 30 page reports about all the different tests they ran and whether they think the shipment has passed or failed these tests. Once you have that report, you can then make a decision of whether you're happy or unhappy with the shipment. If you're happy, you can pay the remaining 70%. If you're unhappy, do not pay the remaining 70%. Protect yourself. Say to the manufacturer, you're not happy and get a resolution with them before you pay them your money. The deposit method with a 70% paid afterwards in combination with a third party inspection is your safety net. It's what keeps you safe. Also, the second thing that keeps you safe is using Alibaba Trade Assurance. That is a second safety net and that is why you only wanna look for manufacturers 
that subscribe to Alibaba's trade insurance. Now, provided your goods pass the inspection and you're happy, you can pay the remaining 70%, you can get your goods shipped directly to the Amazon fulfillment centers. And depending on whether you ship by sea or air, you're probably looking at somewhere between a couple of weeks or a couple of months before your goods arrive at Amazon. And during that period, you can move on to creating a high converting listing that is ready to go for your product launch. Now, when customers shop in stores, they can actually go and physically see the product and physically feel the product. But when customers shop online or on Amazon, they can't do that. So your only chance to actually convert a customer is through your product listing. That's all customers get to see. So it's so important to nail all three key elements of your product listing. And in this section of the tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to absolutely nail every single one of them. And these three elements are, firstly, images, Secondly, keywords or search engine optimization. And then finally, your listing copy. This is your listing title, bullets, and description. So firstly, let's look at images. Now this is a really short, simple statement, but it is so true. Great images sell products. Your images are by far the most important part of your listing. So if you take anything away from this section of the tutorial, it's that you need to have very good, high quality images. Not just high quality, but they need to be done in a way that is high converting for Amazon. And I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. The reason why your images are so important is that images can tell a thousand words, right? You can, with images, you can much more quickly convey much more information to customers about the product. And secondly, images create a more of an emotional response than text does. And that's why images are so good at selling your product. Now, when it comes to images, there's a few best practices you need to follow, which I just wanna quickly talk about. And then what I wanna do is I wanna talk you through the three main types of images you want to uh, use and how to nail all three types. So the first best practice is to use all of the image slots you have available. When you're creating an Amazon listing, you get to use seven images. So make sure that you use all of those image slots. If this is the prime real estate to be able to convert a customer and you have seven slots, why would you only use five, right? Use all seven. And you want to use those seven, you, need to, you want to spread those seven images across your main hero image lifestyle images and infographic images. So guys, don't worry if you've never heard of any of these image types, I'm gonna be going through them in just a sec. The next best practice is to make sure your images are of very high quality and are professionally done. One of the biggest mistakes that I see new sellers making is skimping out on their product images. And all this does is it makes customers think that your product is of low quality. Low quality images makes the customer think of a low quality product. High quality images makes the customer think they're gonna be getting a high quality product. If the customer thinks they're getting a high quality product, they're more likely to purchase the product. It's as simple as that. So do not skimp out on your product images. The next best practice is to be consistent with your design. So when you're actually creating your brand, what you're gonna to wanna to do is create something called a brand kit. And in your brand kit, that's gonna include things like your logo, what fonts you wanna use for your brand, what colors you wanna use for your brand. And once you've created that brand kit, you wanna make sure that all of your marketing materials, including your images on Amazon, use that same brand kit and you're, that you're consistent across them. So for example, if you decide on a font that you wanna use, make sure you use that same font in all of your images. Make sure you use the same brand colors in all of your images. If you decide to have your logo in the bottom left hand corner of one of your images, make sure all of your images have a logo in the bottom left hand corner and so on. By being consistent across your images, just like having high quality professional images is going to convey that, that, your, image, that your product is of higher quality and customers are more likely to buy from you. The next thing you always wanna do is just keep it simple. Another big mistake that I see new sellers making is that they try and add loads of different information. They're really excited about their products and they wanna tell the customer everything about them so they add loads of different information to a single info graphic but the way that people look at images and take in information from images is quick customers don't look at images and slowly read all the information on it they want to know the key feature straight away when they look at that image so it's really important to make sure that you only ever show a customer one or two key features about your product in a single image okay so keep them simple simple is better than being overcomplicated because customers just won't take in the information if there's too much information on one image 
The final best practice is to make sure you don't repeat yourself. And this sounds like an obvious one, but I see people doing this all the time. You've got seven images and you wanna get as much information across to the customer as possible while keeping it simple. Spread out your key features of your product across those seven images and don't repeat yourself. If you tell the customer that your product is made from aluminum and is lightweight in one image, don't say it again in another image. Simple as that. Okay, so let's talk about your main hero image. Your main hero image is by far the most important image out of your seven images. And the reason for this is that it's the only image that shows up in the search results and that customers see before they click onto your product listing. So it's the only image that actually contributes to click-through rate. And your click-through rate is the number of people that actually click onto your listing compared to the number of people that actually see your product listing show up in the search results. So if you have a poor quality hero image, then customers are never ever even gonna click onto your product listing and are never gonna see your other images. So you need to make sure you absolutely nail this main hero image. And the best way to do that is obviously make sure it's done professionally and is of high quality. And secondly, make sure that you show everything that's included in your offer in this main hero image. So for example, if you decide to bundle your laptop stand with a keyboard and mouse, make sure that keyboard and mouse are in that main hero image. You want customers to instantly be able to see why your product offer is more desirable than the competitors just by looking at your main hero image. Another couple of things you wanna do is make sure that the main hero image is on a pure plain white background and that you don't use any graphics. You can use as many graphics as you want and you can uh, use different colored backgrounds in all of the other six images. But Amazon says that for your main hero image, it has to be on a white background and no graphics are used. By them not allowing you to use graphics, it does make it a little bit difficult to always convey all of the key kind of selling points of your product in the main hero image. So you're gonna to have to get a little bit creative here, but there's a lot of different things uh, that you can do here. And in terms of a pro tip for your main hero image, what I'd always recommend you guys doing is getting two to three variations of your main hero image created and then split test the different versions to see which one performs best. So once you're actually selling on Amazon, Amazon has a tool inside Seller Central which is called um, Experiment. So what you can do is you can give Amazon two different hero image, images and say, hey, can you please test these for me? What Amazon will do is they'll show 50% of the people one image in the search results, and then the other 50% of people the other image in the search results, and then they'll find out which one gets a higher click-through rate, which one has a higher conversion rate, and then they'll keep using the winning one. And this is a great little hack to slightly improve your click-through rate and slightly improve your conversion rate, and those two things together can massively increase the number of sales you make and the profit you make. Next, let's talk about lifestyle images. So if you've never heard of lifestyle images, what they are is an image of your product being used in its natural setting. And they look a little bit like this image up on the right hand side here. And the whole point of lifestyle images is to create an emotional response in the customer. When customers look at images, it's great to be able to tell them about all the key features and benefits. But what can really create more of an emotional response and is more likely to lead to a conversion is actually showing them the product being used because what this does is it allows the customer to allow themselves actually using the product allow them to imagine the laptop stand being in their office with their laptop on it and this is a great way to increase conversion rate so you need to make sure that you're using lifestyle images in terms of how many you should use i would say anywhere between two and three is probably the sweet spot and a pro tip with lifestyle images is that you should use real photography most sellers use Photoshop or computer generated uh, images when it comes to their lifestyle images. And you can very easily tell this. And again, just like using low quality images, it makes the customer think that the product is cheap and of low quality. Okay, so now let's talk about infographics. So infographics are a combination of white background or lifestyle images with text and graphics added. And the whole point of these infographics is that they're used to highlight the key features and selling points of a product. So your main hero image is to get customers to click onto your listing. Your lifestyle images are to get create that emotional response to get the customer to imagine themselves using your product. And then the infographics are there to 
basically finish off that sales process by highlighting all of the key features and benefits the product is gonna to bring to the customer. Now, in terms of how many you should use, anywhere between three and four is a sweet spot. And the pro tip with infographics is that you wanna match up the key features with the bullet points. So when customers look at a product listing, most customers prefer to take in information through the images, but some customers uh, just prefer to take in information by reading. So what you wanna do is by making sure that you're highlighting the same key features and benefits in your Im infographic images and in the bullet points, you're conveying the same information to both types of customer, okay? So that's what you wanna achieve. And in terms of what infographics look like, they look something like this. Now there's different types of infographics, but I would always recommend using infographics that look more like these two on the left rather than this one on the right. The reason for that is that if you remember earlier in the video, I mentioned that one of the kind of key things you wanna be doing with images is keeping them simple. The key to a good infographic is being able to convey the key feature that you're trying to highlight to the customer straight away in a split second. If you look at this infographic on the right hand side, there's so much information here that you really have to spend some time looking at it. You need to look at all the different images, you need to read the text, and there's just too much information to take in. If you look at these images on the left hand side, you can instantly see the key feature they're trying to convey. Okay, this Im image on the left-hand side, straight away in a split second, you can see that the, that the product allows your laptop to cool down quickly because it doesn't cover the whole of the bottom of the laptop. So this is kind of the style that you want to be going for over something like this. Okay, so that's how to create killer images for your Amazon listing. Let's now move on to element two, which is your keywords or search engine optimization. So Amazon is a search engine just like eBay, Google, and Bing. eBay uses an algorithm called Cassini and Amazon uses an algorithm called A9. These algorithms have their differences and nuances, but essentially all of these algorithms are keyword based. And the way that keyword based algorithms work or search engines work is that a customer types in a search term or a keyword in a search bar they click search and then the algorithm then shows the customer all of the results that also contain that keyword because they know that's gonna be relevant for what they're looking for. And that's exactly how Amazon works. So let's dive into this a little bit deeper. When you're creating a listing on Amazon, what you wanna do is firstly go away and do some keyword research. When you're doing keyword research, you are trying to find all of the different keywords you think customers are gonna be using to find your product, to search for your product on Amazon. Once you have a list of those keywords, you wanna enter those keywords into your product listing in your title, bullets, and description. There's also a little section called backend keywords, which I'll talk about in just a sec then Amazon will index you for those keywords. What this indexing is, is Amazon associating your product listing with that keyword so that it can show up in the search results. Then what will happen is a customer will go over to Amazon, they will search for a product using a search term. When that search term matches a keyword that is you have entered into your product listing and Amazon has indexed for, your listing will then show up in the search results. And then if you follow everything I talk about in this tutorial and you have great product images and you have great listing copy, customers are then gonna click into your product and they're gonna purchase your product. So now let's move on and talk about how to actually add those keywords in and also how to write a well-crafted title and bullet points. So you want to include as many important keywords as possible in your title, bullets, and description, and then any that you can't fit in here, you can add to your backend keyword list. So your title, bullets, and description are visible to customers on your product listing, but there will be some keywords that you just can't fit in there, and there will also be some keywords you maybe just don't want customers to see. Those keywords can all be added into a section called your backend keyword list. And this is another section um, inside Seller Central, um, inside the listing builder, where you can add up to 250 characters of keywords. And when you're adding these keywords to your copy, you wanna make sure that you add your most important, your most powerful keywords into your title, bullets, and description. 
And then you wanna add your least powerful remaining keywords into your backend keyword list if you've got any left. Now, when I talk about most powerful or most important keywords, what I'm talking about is your most relevant keywords, so the keywords that most accurately describe your product with the highest search volume. And the reason why you wanna make sure they're in your title, bullets, and description is because they have kind of more ranking juice, more power when it comes to organic ranking than keywords entered into your backend keyword list. So now let's talk about how to write a well-crafted title. So as you can see, your title is at the top of your listing. If you've ever shopped on Amazon, you'll know that that's where your title is. And then down here, just the right-hand side of your images, you've got your bullet points, which we'll talk about next. So when you're writing your title, you want to make sure you start your title with your brand name. This is actually a requirement from Amazon. So if you don't do it, Amazon will just uh, either suspend your listing or they'll actually just add the brand name at the beginning of your listing for you. So just make sure you do it. So you want to start your title with your brand name and then you want to write a title that's somewhere between 150 bytes long and you wanna make sure that in that space, you include as many of your key features of your product as possible. So again, like I said, some customers like to look at images and, can, and take in information that way, but some customers will like to read um, information and take it in that way. So you wanna make sure that the customers who like to read titles and the search results instead of just looking at images are able to actually see what the key features of your products are. Again, like I said, it can be quite difficult to convey key information about your product when you're not able to use graphics in your main hero image. So for instance, if you can't convey to the customer that the product's made of aluminium without graphics in your main hero image, a great way to do that is with the text in your title because when customers are looking at search results, they can also see your title in the search results. You wanna make sure that you include as many of your most powerful keywords as possible for reasons that I just explained, but don't, make sure you don't keyword stuff, right? Don't just add in loads of different keywords. You wanna make sure that your title, which should be about maybe two sentences long, is perfectly readable. You want it to read like a proper sentence while including as many po as possible powerful keywords. A pro tip with your title is that you want to make sure that the most important information, the key selling features of your product are included in the first 50 to 70 bytes. And the reason for this is that only the first 50 to 70 bytes are actually shown on mobile. And now the majority of shopping on Amazon actually happens on mobile. So this is super important and a really good pro tip. Now let's talk about your bullet points, which are just down here to the right hand side of your images. Now, when you're writing your bullet points, um, again, just like the title, you wanna aim for somewhere between 150 and 200 bytes per bullet point. Any shorter, there's not enough space for you to add in information about your product any longer and they just look a bit ugly and kind of overbearing. Um, you also wanna use all five bullet points. You get five bullet points, it's key real estate to tell the customer the key features about your product, so make sure you use them. Just like the seven images you have, make sure you use all the space available, okay? This is key real estate for conversions. And when you're writing these bullet points, what you wanna do is have a look at the key features that you highlighted in your infographics, and you wanna highlight those same key features in your bullet points. And make sure that you not only just highlight the key features, you also highlight the benefits that those features bring. And a pro tip is to lead with a benefit first approach, right? This is gonna massively increase your conversion rate and is a great pro tip. And let me just explain what this looks like and how to do it. So firstly, let's talk about what the difference between a feature and a benefit is. So a feature of a product is that it's made from aluminum. And the benefit of that feature is that the product's lightweight and durable, right? That's why you would make a laptop stand out of aluminum for the fact that it's gonna make it lightweight and durable. Another feature may be that the laptop stand has air vents. And the benefit of that is it prevents overheating, right? So that's the difference between features and benefits. Now, what I see a lot of sellers doing, and this makes sense, right? You spend loads of time building your product, all the different features. You care about the features as a seller. But the buyer, the customer doesn't care about the features. What they care about is the benefit. What benefit are those features gonna to bring to them? So a mistake that I see a lot of sellers doing is that they lead their bullet points with a feature first approach. But what you wanna be doing, and this is gonna give you a massive advantage over your competitors, is lead with a benefit first approach. 
So let me give you an example. What a feature first approach looks like is saying something like this. Aluminium body. Our laptop stands are made from the highest quality machine cut aluminium to keep them lightweight and durable. What you don't want to be doing is this. What you do want to be doing is something more along the lines of this. So at the beginning, instead of highlighting the feature, you highlight the benefit. Super lightweight and durable. Our laptop stands are made out of 100% premium machine cut aluminium. By doing this, you're triggering more of an emotional response but from the customer and they're more likely to purchase your product. You're gonna massively increase your conversion rates just by making this small change to the way that you write your bullet points. Now guys, these pro tips might all seem like quite small things on their own, and each one might only lead to a small increase in conversion rate. But when you actually stack them and you combine them together, together they're gonna lead to a massive increase in conversion rate and they're gonna really help increase your sales and increase your dominance over your competition. Okay, so your products have now arrived at the Amazon fulfillment centers and you've created a killer listing that's gonna convert like crazy. Now what you need to do is launch your product. And what you're trying to achieve during a product launch is to gain high organic keyword ranking for your product. Now, if you've never heard of organic keyword ranking before, essentially what it means is how high up in the search results your product shows up after a customer searches a specific search term on Amazon. So for example, if someone searches laptop stand on Amazon and your product shows up in the top position, your product has an organic keyword ranking of number one for the search term laptop stand. An organic keyword ranking is always done on a keyword by keyword basis. And success on Amazon is all about, it is literally all about gaining high organic keyword ranking for your products. The higher your organic keyword ranking for your products, the more organic visibility you're gonna get, the more clicks you're gonna get, and the more sales you're going to get. So how do you actually go about launching your product? How do you go about gaining organic keyword ranking? Well, it's all determined by Amazon's super secret A9 algorithm. And the honest truth, guys, is that no one, none of the gurus out there know exactly how this algorithm works. Anyone who tells you that they do is just lying to you. But what we do know is that the most important factor when it comes to organic keyword ranking is sales velocity. And what sales velocity is, is how many sales you've had in recent history. So how many sales your product has had over the last week, over the last month, right? So to gain organic keyword ranking, your product needs to have high, strong sales velocity. Now the issue here is you're left with a bit of a chicken and egg situation. When your product first goes live, your product has no sales history, and as a result, your product has low organic keyword ranking. Low organic keyword ranking results in your product getting low impressions, and low impressions results in your product getting low clicks and low sales velocity. And as a result of that low sales velocity, you maintain that low organic keyword ranking. And this is what I call a negative feedback loop. And this is the exact reason why you need to go through a launch process, because if you don't, your product's just gonna stay in this negative feedback loop, you are never gonna gain organic keyword ranking, and your product's never going to be successful. So what you need to do is drive initial traffic and sales to your product listing using Amazon PPC, using paid advertising. And I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that a little bit later on in the video. And by doing that, you're gonna kick off a positive feedback loop or something that I like to call keyword rank snowballing. So let me show you what that looks like. So during a product launch, you initially wanna be quite aggressive with your Amazon PPC advertising to drive paid traffic and sales on your product listing. As a result, your product's listing sales velocity is gonna increase. As the sales velocity increases, your organic keyword ranking is gonna increase. As a result of that, your organic visibility is gonna increase, your organic clicks are gonna increase, and your organic sales are gonna increase. As your organic sales increase, you're now getting organic sales as well as sales for Amazon PPC. This is gonna further drive up your sales velocity, which is gonna further drive up your organic keyword ranking. Now, what you'll find is that in your first month or so of your launch, you're gonna to wanna to be really aggressive with your Amazon PPC campaigns to kick off this positive feedback loop. But once you have high organic keyword ranking and you're getting a high number of organic sales, this positive feedback loop is going to keep itself going even once you reduce your PPC spend. So you can actually start to reduce your PPC spend to increase your profitability while maintaining a high organic keyword ranking. And guys, this is exactly what you're trying to achieve during a product launch. So let's talk a little bit more about Amazon PPC, how it works and how you should set it up to achieve a good launch. 
So what does PPC stand for? Well, PPC stands for pay-per-click. And what pay-per-click advertising on Amazon does is that it allows sellers to advertise their product listings in places that cannot be reached organically. So let me show you what I mean by this. So when you search a search term on Amazon, these top four listings are not actually organic spots. These cannot be achieved organically. You can only show your product listings in these top spots by using Amazon PPC. And the way that you know these product listings are Amazon PPC ads is because they have the little sponsored badge on them. Then these two products are the first two organically ranked products in the search results. The second place that Amazon PPC ads can also show is on product listing pages right here. And again, you cannot show your product listing in these placements organically. You can only show products on, uh, on product listings in these spots using Amazon PPC. And obviously, as the name suggests, the seller pays per click by a potential customer. So you don't pay per sale, you pay per click, obviously PPC. And the main goals when using Amazon PPC is to increase organic keyword ranking. That is what PPC is mainly used for by sellers and that's the way that I would recommend you using it. So to gain that, to kick off that positive feedback loop during a product launch and then to maintain your organic keyword ranking following a product launch. And when it comes to Amazon PPC, there's really two main types of PPC campaigns that you can set up. The first is called an automatic PPC campaign and the second is called a manual targeting PPC campaign. With an automatic PPC campaign, Amazon decides where your ads will be displayed. So Amazon will use all of the data in your product listing and they'll decide which search results they want your ad to show up in and what product detail pages, which ASINs they want your product ad to your PPC ad to show up in. In comparison with manual PPC campaigns, Amazon doesn't decide, you decide where you want your ads to be displayed. So you tell Amazon uh, what keywords you want your ad to show up on and which ASINs you want your ad to show up on. So automatic PPC campaigns tend to be much broader. They're easier and quicker to set up because there's very few settings, but they tend to be much broader. And as a result, because Amazon shows your ad on a lot more irrelevant placements, uh, they tend to be more expensive and perform worse than manual key, uh, PPC campaigns. Obviously with manual campaigns, because you're telling Amazon specifically what, where you want the ads to show, they're more targeted, they show on less irrelevant placements and they tend to be cheaper and perform better than automatic PPC campaigns. So what you're probably saying is obviously Luca, then surely we only want to be using manual PPC campaigns. That is incorrect. I would actually recommend that you use a three campaign strategy. And this is something that I teach extensively in uh, my full training program, the Amazon Brand Academy. But what I'm gonna give you in this tutorial is just an overview of how this three campaign strategy works. And this is what I like to call the DRP strategy the discovery research performance strategy. In this strategy, you want to set up three um, PPC campaigns that all work together. The first campaign is called a discovery campaign, and this is an automatic targeting PPC campaign. The role of this campaign is to allow Amazon to basically test your PPC ads on loads of different search terms, loads of different product detail pages, and then what you can do is you can look at the reports and you can find out which search terms performed well for your product and which terms, search terms performed badly for your product. The ones that perform well for your product, you then can target in your second campaign, which is called a research campaign. In this campaign, you wanna target those keywords in something called broad and phrase match form. And the point of this campaign is to test different variations of that keyword that you discovered in the discovery campaign. So let me explain a little bit more about what that looks like. So when you target a broad or phrase match keyword in a manual targeting campaign, what Amazon will do is they will not only advertise on that specific keyword. So let's say the keyword, the broad or phrase keyword is laptop stand. Amazon will not only show your PPC ad after customers search laptop stand, they'll also show your ad when customers search any variation of that keyword. So for example, your ad will show up after someone searches metal laptop stand, wooden laptop stand, laptop stand for Mac, silver stand for laptops. And then what you can then do is look at the reports, the search term reports. And what you'll find is 
Some of the search terms, some of the keywords perform really badly for your product. However, some will perform well. For the keywords or search terms that perform badly for your product, what you wanna do is exclude them from the campaigns and stop spending money on them as quickly as possible. And then the keywords that perform well for your campaigns, you know that these are the winning variations. These are your best performing search terms, your best performing keywords. So what you wanna do with them is you then wanna take them from your research campaign and target them in exact match form in something called a performance campaign. When you target the keyword in exact match form, Amazon will only advertise your PPC ad on that exact keyword, that exact search term. So this is a much more targeted way to advertise on Amazon. So just to summarize, your discover campaign is used to discover relevant keywords for your product. You then wanna take those keywords and target them in broad match and phrase match form in your research campaign. This is used to test different variations of those keywords. And then you wanna find the winning variations and target them in a much more targeted exact match form in a performance campaign. What you're gonna end up with is a performance campaign that contains your highest performing keywords. And as a result, this is really where you wanna be spending the majority of your, of your ad spend because this is gonna be the campaign that performs the best. And the whole point of using this three campaign strategy, the whole end goal is to kick off this positive feedback loop and gain those top organic keyword ranking spots for your product so that you get good visibility, you get a high number of clicks and you get a high number of sales and you have a profitable product. And that is the key to successfully selling on Amazon. So once you're launched and selling, Amazon will pay you every 14 days. And all you need to do is optimize your PPC campaigns. And this can be done every week or every couple of weeks using the exact strategy that I just showed you and reorder stock when you're running low. That is literally it. Amazon will do everything else. And as a result, you're gonna be able to manage your business in under two hours a week. So you can spend the rest of your time sitting back, doing the things you love and just watching the profit roll in. And this is the exact same five step strategy that I've used to launch all of my products and helped hundreds of students launch their products on Amazon as well and achieve some incredible results. So guys, you really now have two options. The first option is to do nothing. Option two is for those of you who are excited about this opportunity and you wanna get started with Amazon FBA and that is to take action. Because if you wanna get started, you have to take action. As Mark Twain said, the secret to getting ahead is just getting started in the first place. So if you're excited about this opportunity, you wanna get started with Amazon FBA and you're ready to take action, then you've got another choice to make and you've got two more options. Option number one is to do it the hard way, which is on your own. So after this webinar, you can do your own research and you can cobble together information, which is probably out of date from a number of different coaches and experts on different platforms like blogs and YouTube channel, uh, hoping that you can find all of the information and that all fits together and then decide on a product idea without getting any feedback from someone who's already been there and done it and just hope that it's gonna work. And guys, this is the much harder way and also the much riskier way because you just have no idea of what you are doing is right at each step. And I know this because this is the route that I took and I wish that I went for option two because there is a much, much easier way. A way which would have literally saved me thousands of pounds and hundreds of hours in avoidable mistakes. And that way is to join a training program and have an experienced seller and coach just like myself help you along the way. So option two, which is the easy way, is to let me help you along the way. And the way that I can help you is with the Amazon Brand Academy, which is a full step-by-step -step guided training program that comes with mentorship and support. So there's two main elements to the Amazon Brand Academy. The first is the Amazon Brand Academy 2.0 course. And this is an online video training with 21 modules over 220 lessons. I think there's actually 240 lessons at the time of recording this. That's because I'm continuously updating this video course with new information and over 33 hours of content across those 240 lessons. And this is a super detailed video course with a combination of slideshows and screen shares. And it is very, very detailed. There's literally no stone unturned. If you wanna know something about Amazon FBA, I guarantee you it's in this course somewhere across the 21 modules. So in the first one to six modules, there's an introduction to the training. And then what I cover is just everything you need to know about setting up your business. 
So how to form your limited company, understanding UK taxes, so income tax, corporation tax, VAT, how to create your Amazon Seller Central account and set up everything properly on Amazon so you're set for, for success from the beginning. And then finally, getting into the business mindset so that you're ready to go into product research, which is covered over modules seven, eight, nine, and 10. Module seven is all about getting into your customer's shoes and understanding the psychology behind how people shop online. And it's so important to understand that before you move into product research. And then in modules eight, nine, and 10, what we do is we focus on the product research funnel in much, much more detail. So at the end of module 10, you'll be able to have a really good understanding of how to find winning products that are gonna absolutely dominate your competition. Then in modules 11, 12, and 13, we look at how to create your brand once you have a product idea, how to source and manufacture that product, and then again, how to ship that product from your manufacturer straight to the Amazon warehouse, and whether you should go for sea shipping, air shipping, and some of the other shipping options that are available to you. In module 14, we look at how to build the perfect high converting product listing. We've touched on some of the points, but we go into much, much more detail in module 14. Then in module 15, we look at product reviews. In module 16, we then look at product launches. So the theory behind product launches, all of the different product launch methods that are available to you, which one's gonna be best for you and your product, and then how to prepare and get your product listing and your business ready for a product launch. We then have three whole modules with about five hours worth of content just focusing on Amazon PPC. So a really deep dive into Amazon advertising. Guys, there's very few Amazon FBA courses that go into this much detail on Amazon PPC. I've actually seen other coaches selling courses for the same price as this course just with this amount of PPC training on it. So it's amazing that this is actually included with this training program. And then the final two modules focus on Facebook advertising, which is an additional method that you can use to launch your product and then business management. So all the day-to-day -day things that you can do to manage your business and actually grow your business. And don't just take my word for it, we've had some incredible feedback from our students so far. So Tom says he signed up to the Amazon Brand Academy a couple of weeks ago, absolutely addicted and inspired, love the balance of enthusiasm and honesty. Mohammed says, I have watched and compared many FBA trainings and by far Luke's training is the most comprehensive and genuine one. I've bought the Amazon Brand Academy program and I must say that every penny is well spent. Shelly says, I wanted to say how impressed I am with the content so far. Luke says, thank you for all of your guidance. This course has been amazing. And Dee said, I enrolled yesterday and I spent the day getting stuck in, very impressed. So that's element number one. Element number two, is lifetime one-to-one -one mentorship and support. So obviously when you're launching a new business, information is super important because you need to know what you're doing and you're gonna find all of that information in the video course. But information alone isn't always enough to be successful. It's also super useful to be able to lean on someone that has more experience than you and get one-to-one -one support so that you can get clarity on anything that doesn't make sense and then also get feedback on key business decisions. And that's exactly why the training program comes with unlimited one-to-one -one email support directly with myself. And that's what sets us apart from other training programs. When you join the Amazon Brand Academy, you're not just given information and then left to build your business on your own. I'm here to help and support you at every step of the journey so that I can provide clarity on anything that doesn't make sense and also give you a second opinion on key decisions such as what product to launch, product listing feedback, and product launch strategy. And just like our video course, I've had some incredible feedback from our students about this one-to-one -one support. So Joe says, wow, the level of detail and analysis you have provided here goes way beyond my expectations. I cannot thank you enough for taking the time to walk me through this process. Isabel says, thanks for all your help, Luca. Your support has been invaluable. And a really nice message from Danny who says, I wanna personally thank you for actually wanting to genuinely help people. The training program also comes with lifetime updates. So as things change on Amazon, as the best practices change, I'll update the training program. And as a member, you'll get lifetime access to all of these updates. And I'm so confident that you're absolutely gonna love the training program that it comes with a 30 day money back guarantee. So you can enroll in the training program, watch a couple of modules, and if for any reason it's not for you, you don't like the content, or you just find my voice annoying, then you can apply for a full refund within 30 days. So when you join the Academy, you get access to the Amazon Brand Academy 2.0 course, as well as unlimited one-to-one -one support, 
and lifetime update plus a 30 day guarantee. So these are the main two elements you get when you enroll in the training program, but that's not it. You also get four huge bonuses included. Bonus number one is your tool belt bundle. So this is every tool and template you need to run your business and it goes hand in hand with the training in the video course. And this includes five tools and a template pack. The first tool is your budget calc tool. So this tool allows you to enter in your budget and this tool helps you break down exactly where your budget should be spent and how it can affect what products you can look for during product research. The second tool is the Profit Calc X tool. The Profit Calc tool allows you to pick, work out exactly what your target cost per unit is and what your profit margins are going to be at specific selling prices. The third tool is the Product Research tool. This allows you to track all of your products as you work your way through the product research funnel. The fourth tool is Negotiation Tracker. This allows you to keep track of all of the different manufacturers you're negotiating with, the quality of the samples, the price they're offering you, so that you can easily pick a winning manufacturer at the end of your negotiations. The fifth and final tool is PPC Tracker, which is a tool that allows you to keep track of all of your PPC campaigns. And the final element to the Toolbelt Bundle is a template bundle, which includes all of the templates that you're gonna need, such as a manufacturer first contact template, a purchasing contract template, and so much more. Bonus number two is access to a private mastermind community. And this is another place where you can get support. So obviously you can reach out to me directly for support, but there's gonna be certain situations where you want to ask a wide group of people their opinion on a certain topic, and that's where the mastermind community can really help. It's a place where you can access peer-to-peer -peer support from a community of like-minded entrepreneurs who are all launching and running their Amazon FBA business. And the cool thing is because everyone in this group is gonna be at different stages on their journey, it's a great place to connect, build relationships, support, and be supported by the other members. We have an awesome active community, so this can be a really great place to reach out for support when you need it. Bonus number three is something called ABA sessions. So what ABA sessions are, are videos that I record and upload into the members portal every single month covering the key updates in the Amazon FBA space. So if anything changes on Amazon, there's any specific news that I think you need to know about, I record it, put it into a video and upload it. And essentially I'm doing the research so you don't have to. So just by watching these videos on a monthly basis, you can be up to date on every single thing that's happening in the Amazon FBA space. The fourth and final bonus is your discount ticket. So over the years that I've been selling on Amazon, I have tried and tested so many different Amazon FBA softwares and services. Some have been great and some have been rubbish. And what I've done is I've used that knowledge to build a list of recommended software and services. What I've also done is I've contacted all of those software and service providers and negotiated exclusive discounts for all of our Amazon Brand Academy members. So this includes discounts on all of the recommended Amazon FBA softwares that you need to use for your business, as well as services like business banking, business insurance, business accounting, freight forwarding, product photography, and so on. Just by using this discount ticket and rec list of recommended services, you're never gonna have to search for a service again, and you're gonna save thousands of pounds over the lifetime of your business. So once you enroll in the Amazon Brand Academy, you have all of these elements and bonuses all in one place, which is your online members portal. So let's do a final recap. When you enroll in the Amazon Brand Academy today, you'll get instant lifetime access to the Amazon Brand Academy 2.0 course with over 220 step-by-step -step video lessons. You'll also get access to lifetime one-to-one -one mentorship and support directly with myself as well as our tool belt bundle and template pack, mastermind community, monthly ABA sessions, and our list of recommended services and discount ticket. You'll also get access to lifetime updates on all of this. So once a member, always a member. As I update anything on the training program or as we release further versions, you will always get access to all of those future updates. You also get a 30 day money back guarantee. So you can join the training program, watch a couple of modules, and if it's not for you for any reason, you can get a full refund within 30 days. So you have literally nothing to lose. And this can all be yours today for just 749. And this is such good value. You're literally getting thousands and thousands of pounds worth of training, tools, and one-to-one -one support 
for just 749. So guys, if you want to start your Amazon FBA journey today, I'd absolutely love to have you as a member and to support you on that journey. So if you want to get started today and you want me to support you on that journey, all you need to do now is click on the link down in the description or in the comments, enroll and I will see you in the training. Now, just one thing to point out, this is a special 50% discount offer we're running at the moment and it will be ending soon. So if you're considering joining the Academy, now is the time to do it. So if you're interested in joining the Amazon Brand Academy, make sure to enroll now and make use of this incredible 50% discount offer that we're running at the moment. Now, if you want to join the Academy, but you just don't have the funds to pay up front, don't worry at all. We've also got you covered because we have a four month payment plan. With this four month payment plan, you can split the cost of the training program equally over four months. There's no application process or credit checks or any of that nonsense. You literally just enroll in the training program and then there are four monthly payments taken from your account. The cool thing with this payment plan is that that 50% discount still also applies to this payment plan. So we have loads of incredible student success stories, but I just want to highlight a few here. The first one is obviously Narindra's story and his journey to 100K, which I've already talked about. The second is Tom and Kelly. So Tom and Kelly are a couple who joined the Amazon Brand Academy, who like many of our other students joined because they wanted to create an additional revenue stream for themselves along their, alongside their full-time jobs. Now, after working with them one-on-one -on -one for a few months on their product idea, they then launched their first product. They very quickly joined the 10K Club. And then since then, they've actually launched a second product and are continuing to grow their brand on Amazon. And there's an amazing picture uh, of them with their 10K award. The third and final success story that I wanna tell you guys about is one of our students called Michael. Now, Michael, like many of our other students, joined the Amazon Brand Academy with no previous business or e-commerce experience. And he also had a starting budget of zero pounds. After a few months of us working together one-on-one, -on -one, Michael had chosen his first product and he'd also managed to get a government startup loan to fund the launch of that first product, which is just incredible. Within 12 months, Michael was selling two products and had generated over £100,000 on Amazon. Just with those two products, at the moment, Michael's generating around £15,000 a month, which at his profit margin works out at about £4,000 profit per month just from those two products. And he has a whole product range planned that he plans on launching. And why this is such a cool success story is it just shows what, you, what can be achieved with Amazon FBA, even if you don't have the starting budget at the beginning. What would an extra £1,000 per month mean to you? because that is easily achievable with just one product doing a few thousand pounds a month in revenue on Amazon. What would an extra 2,000 pounds per month mean to you? What would working two hours per week mean for you? What would location freedom mean to you? If you could launch an Amazon FBA business that could earn you a full-time income while only working two hours per week from anywhere in the world on your laptop, would it be worth it? Now, if you answered yes to that question, I want to invite you one last time to join the Amazon Brand Academy at a 50% discount for just 749. And guys, this is a special 50% discount offer and it will be ending soon. So if you're considering joining the Amazon Brand Academy, now is the time to do it. Enroll and I will see you in the training.